three, two, one. Welcome everybody to Rolling on Three, the first podcast for all three wheel owners, whether you're riding on a Riker, Spider, Slingshot, anything Rolling on Three Wheels is the show for you. Today I'd like to welcome, oh, ah, Damon to the show. Damon is from San Antonio, Texas. Damon, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it, appreciate it. And I start off the show with the same question, what are you rolling on? I run on a Can Am Riker 2020. Can Am Riker 2020. Nice. Okay. Well, when did you pick up that bike? I bought it from Dallas and at an auction. I went out for auction, I think, at August 15th when I won it. And I drove four hours to go pick it up. I won it off an of auction. Man, it seemed like the man, this guy was going back and forth, and he finally gave up on it. Oh, and I okay. won it. All right. It was a it was a live auction. Yeah, it's oh. a live auction. Man, oh wow! This is the first. I I never had anybody who bought the bike from a live auction. That's cool. So where did you pick? Yeah. Where did you say you went to the auction to get it? In Dallas, Dallas, Dallas? Texas. How did that come about? How did you find that out? Uh, I went. How I started, I was going to the dealership. I'm mm-hmm. like, I kind of want to pay cash, so I kind of kept doing my research. Now I went on the auction site, and they had Dallas, they had Georgia. Now I seen had they had three of them in Dallas. I'm like, let me see if I could bid on it and win it. So I had to pay the registration fee. I think it was like, I want to say fifty nine for a year. Now I had to mm-hmm. put down a, a spending limit, so I think I had to put like five hundred, so I could go over a certain amount. Right. Then I seen one I liked. Man, the description said we're running, wasn't really nothing wrong with it. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go after this one. So the day of the auction, I got on probably like about this time around about noon, and my time came up at number nine. Then I had a certain spending limit to <laughs> see if I was gonna get it, but I kind of seeded the cap a little bit to win it. <laughs> how much then did you, went, how much did it come out to? Who uh Oh, 39.50 when I paid for it. Ooh, but I'm yeah. like, I'm like, man, it's a good deal. Now when I went up there seeing it, it was kind of wrecked. And I'm like, where the battery at? There was no battery or radio or nothing on it. But I'm wow. like, the scripture said we're running. So in my head, I'm like, well, I got a little work on it. I got to fix. So when I brought it home, I started working on it myself to put it back together. I ordered everything. Okay. And kind of find out find out my right frame was bent because I tried to put the panel on there. Oh, man. I'm like, oh, I'm like, oh Lord. I'm like, now nah, I got to go in the shop. So I took it in the shop, and it took about two months. They rebuilt the whole frame on there. Wow. For $1,500. You still they came rebuilt. under. You still came yeah. under for 2020. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. So the the place that you took it to to get fixed, is in your area, or you had to go somewhere else? Uh, it's here in San Antonio. Oh, okay. Yeah, it took it should have took them less than two months, but they had other stuff in front of it. So I was kind of getting impatient because like, well, it took me about two or three weeks. At yeah, two or three weeks, I ain't pick it up to November. Ooh. I dropped it, I dropped it off in September and then pick it up in November. Oh and okay. that story and that story is it was probably been that longer, but I was getting impatient because it kept lying to me week after week. So the manager came in and said, well, I'm going to have it together today. I'm like, can I help? He's like, sure. So oh. me and him put it back together. Oh, man. Well, that's not bad. I mean, at least you got to work on it. Put your hands on it. That's that's dope. Yeah. They, yeah I, had, they, mm-hmm. I had a little minor issues. Like, I was still getting a uh, fault code, so it kept putting me in limp mode. So I took it to the dealership, and then back in January, when I finally got it fit completely. I drove in New Braunfels that day. I met um, three three miles. I met oh, him. Right. I now I came back home. I came back home. I hit a back road. I think I hit a bump and sit right off the fault mode. Oh man, there they had those sensor issues or something else. They're a little finicky. People tell me about those all the time. Yeah, so I put in the shop. They kept in there three days and they've been running perfect since. No, that's good. That's I had. Good. I rolled it twice since then. Mm-hmm. Had the snow snowstorm and kind of been cold here. 
<laughs> yeah, I know. Texas, you guys got hit crazy out there. That's amazing, man. I was talking to a few guys on my last live show, and they were like, man, it, it was just, it came out of nowhere out there. Yeah, it was crazy. I never experienced that here since I've been here. I experienced it elsewhere, but not right. here. Did you ever uh, ride a bike before, a uh, motorcycle? Nope. That's my first one. Mm, okay. I've been one one for so long, but that's the first one I ever rode. Wow, wow, like, I see why people ride. Even though I ain't on two wheels, I see why they ride. It's just a thrill. <laughs> so what made you choose if you... What made you choose the three wheeler and not a two wheeler anyway? I guess seeing people flipping, like when it, my biggest fear going to curves, I get to lean and stuff like that. I'm like, I don't know if I can lean like that. <laughs> Cause my my best friend, he have a um, 1400. I can't think of the name. He got a 1400. I just mm -hmm. see how he go on the ride with him. I'm like, no, nah, I'm still to the three wheels. I can't. I'm not <laughs> swerving through traffic <laughs> like that. <laughs> I hear you, man. I hear you. Well, from me being on two wheels to three, I kind of like, to me, it's more of a relaxing ride because in two wheels, you know, it's mostly you got to think four or five steps ahead. But to me, this is more of a cruising back and chilling ride. So I kind of like love the three wheels. So I get what you're trying, what you're saying. Yeah, now, I love it too. I want to mm -hmm. upgrade in the future. Oh, yeah? I want to up to a spider. I ain't trying to leave the right, but I want to upgrade to a spider because I want to do long travel. Right. Yeah. That you'll definitely like that because with the spider, you have a lot more room. It's a little bit more comfortable and a lot more storage space if you're doing long runs. I know. My amp taking away my trunk space already. <laughs> We're gonna talk about those mods in a bit, but um uh what's the riding like in San Antonio? Is it like are you in a rural part or is it city riding? Like, what are you doing over there? Uh, city ride. My friends stay like five minutes from here. So my experience is my first time, I was kind of scared to get on the highway because, you know, I ain't no experience rider. Okay. And my first ride, my first ride with him, and he did exactly what I didn't want him to do, going straight on the highway. So he took <laughs> me on the highway. I'm like, oh, Lord, then he's like, you got to keep up. And I'm like, I'm, I'm already nervous. <laughs> So he kind of took me out of that shaky, that shaky experience. So we went on a back road. There's a back road we took. It was nice. It was a straightaway. He said, he told me to go ahead. I'm going to catch up with you. So I'm like, well, let me get this free out my way. I'm going to see how fast it goes. So I think I got up to about 102 on the back road. And he just came out of nowhere and passed. I'm like, wow. <laughs> but after that day, I got back on the highway. And I've been comfortable ever since. Every time we ride, we go on the highway. That's good. I mean, it's good. I guess it, it's sort of like when you jump into the pool and not knowing how to swim. You just you're gonna do it or you're not gonna do it, right? That's that's all that's a good way to do it. At least he took you out there and are you planning on uh taking the course or oh I'm already licensed. Oh, okay. All right, even that's better. The first thing, that's the first thing I did before I got it. I got the license. But here it's kinda like they govern it to about fifteen miles. So I didn't get the true experience how fast it go. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So we go over 15 miles and we done it in one day. Oh, okay. All right. I didn't know that. Man, that's yeah, interesting. From eight to five on a Saturday. So eight to five. The and first, mm -hmm. I think the first four hours was on a bike and the last four hours in class. Oh, all right. Well, I guess that's some type of experience just to be on it. I get that. I get that. How's um in San Antonio, how's the bike life? How's the culture out there? Is it a lot of riders? Is it big? What What is it about out there? Mm, I'm starting to see more and more now. At first, mm -hmm. I didn't see them. I didn't see that many. Mm -hmm. Now, when I drive around, I'm like, where they come from? I don't see too many, but there's plenty of them here, but I don't really see them unless it's on weekend. I've probably seen maybe five or six on the highway since I've been here. Mm -hmm. But since I started riding, right. I, I met one guy at the dealership. Then I met another one. There's a, a, a guy, his wife, I met them at a restaurant. And she had a 600. Okay. And I seen, like, I seen about two or three on the highway. Okay, my so cousin, it's, it's getting a my little cousin popular. Told me, Mm -hmm. Yeah, my cousin told me he seen one just like mine that kind of like a darker green. 
Oh. I'm like, I need to see him. <laughs> That's right. There's only one Green Lantern Riker out there right now. <laughs> yep. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. So now that you're in the bike life, uh, you was a, well, you still are a truck man. So tell me about this, uh, this truck club you got. Uh, I met my friend back in, well, he's my best friend. I met him back in school. We were going, I was in diesel tech and he was in welding. Okay. And that's why I basically just got my truck lifted. So he been asking me to join the club. I'm like, I don't know. So about, it took me about a month to think about it. Then I joined back in January, like 2019, I joined. And I got the experience to go to truck shows in Houston. I went to Daytona that year. Then now I started putting more. I kind of slashed off my bike so I get my truck ready because he he promoted me to the Texas chapter president. Oh wow! So I'm, okay, I, I'm the chapter president of Texas now. So that's one of the biggest club in nation. It's mm -hmm. level seven, level seven TC dot com. If y'all want to check it out, and my president named Chris Pat. So if you got a clip, basically if you got a hooked up truck and you look to do more to it, apply for it. Oh. And you're looking into it. All right. I mean, that's that's pretty dope. We kind of know. We kind of know. Wait, well, uh -huh. he know. He know mm -hmm. around the world because we got, I would say, about four to five hundred members. Wow, wow, that is awesome, man. Dang, I know the truck life is big, especially when you start heading out to to the Midwest and stuff like that. You know, I've I've seen pictures of what guys do to their trucks, but that's cool that. You know, you're into that and the mod. So the modifications for the Riker mustn't be not much for you to do, huh? I kind of think about it, kind of image what I want to do, and I just do it. What have that you done like so one. far? Uh, I added two tower speakers to it. I changed uh, the muffler. I run the arm. Um, dang, I can't think of the name. The exhaust system he has, Brandon King. I'm Brandon running King. Brandon King. Brandon King. Then I got the amp, the marine amp, so it's kind of like waterproof. Yeah, mm -hmm. basically here and there, I, I did all the painting myself in the garage. Okay. The, the the decal, my best friend that got the the fourteen hundred, he do my decal. Then I changed out the headlights, so I'm running different headlights. I got the LED head, headlights on there. Right. And that's about it. Still a little bit more, like the I. Uh, when she uh, did that, man, I'm still trying to think what else I can do to it. I want to <laughs> change the seat. So I want to change the seat because I can't ride too long on a regular seat. Oh yeah, I'm the same way, man. Those those seats are not. And you know, I want to get the custom seat, but with that price, I'm working with somebody who's actually going to make a actual seat for me instead of me buying their custom seat. Mm -hmm. He's going to redesign a seat that'll fit on the bike and I'll have it custom stitched with everything I want on it. Instead of spending that type of money, I could I was going to get something else done. But I, from what I hear, the custom seat is very, very comfortable. I heard. Yeah. My fault. yeah. No problem. No problem. Man, we'll fix that in editing. But no, that's cool. So how much are you in on mods if you had to have a price, if you had to price it? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> this, I'll say almost two thousand. Ah, that's not bad. That's not bad. I've had I've right. had some crazy numbers. I still got more. I want to change out the pedals on there. Oh yeah, get the the full pedal. I can't ride because I'm like seeing like I put my feet in the feet in the middle. And it's about aching. I'm like man, <laughs> I got to stretch my leg out. <laughs> that's one thing I I wasn't planning on doing was uh the pedals. That's the only thing I probably won't do, but everything else I, I add on to that thing so much. Oh, and I didn't do the grill guard. That's the one oh, thing yeah, I didn't. I got that one too. Oh, I got, got the grill guard then. I won the other one from Three House Moto from um Steelworks. Oh, okay. So I won that. So I just put that on there. I was going to paint it, but I'm like, no, nah, I'm going to leave it black. All right, all right. I mean, I didn't do. I put a little mesh guard that I picked up myself, and I just cut it out and put it into the grill. But I didn't buy any custom ones because I don't know if I'm gonna keep buying all these customized parts. I think I'm gonna start try to start making my own because 
there's just certain looks I want to add to the bike, especially with lighting, and I don't want to buy it. So I'm just going to look into seeing if I can just construct my own wiring and stuff like that. Same here. Same here. I was looking at putting all the lights on there. I went to the LED light place here in San Antonio. They didn't know too. Mm -hmm. He gave me the price on putting the lights on. I'm like, no, nah, I'm doing it myself. I'm like, you charge a lot. Yeah, yeah, it is a lot. That's why I was like, if I order my own kits and the length that I want and the color sequence, I'm just going to wire it up myself and just, I have an idea what I want to do, but, you know, it's a little, little bit at a time because right now it was riding season, but I got out for like three days and then the temperature just dropped again. So we're back in the 30s. So I'm waiting till next week when it gets nice so I can ride out again and start doing some more, you know, I got some other plans I want to do. So in um, yeah, in your area, do they have like um, a popular bike meet place? Like, you know, people who are traveling and they want to stop. Is there like us, like the popular spot where everybody goes with their bikes? I can't tell you all that because I'm still trying to figure everything out. <laughs> If anything, I can find out more with my friend, but I know in Houston, they uh -huh. they have it big down there. Okay. I know they have Sling Fest coming up in Galveston. Okay. So, All right. I don't know if I want to drive that three hours on my bike or I'm <laughs> pulling with my truck down there. That's a big truck you in there, though. Can you just put the bike in the truck? <laughs> no, nah, I got the, you know how the old avalanche look? Yes, yes. So I have a Silverado, but I have the avalanche kit to it. Oh, okay, okay. So yeah, the bed is kind of taken up with a spoiler, yeah. right? Um, yeah, I know a little bit, a little bit about trucks. So, um, uh, you told me you was in the military. Are you still in the military? Or I'm retired. Retired. All right. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your service. So you've been, um, oh, so you're a career man. So, uh, San Antonio is that your is that your last stop, your first stop? Is that where you're settling at, or well, how was it? Well, this is my last stop. Okay. I love it here because I came here with my friends now. Now I'm like, hey, well, I'm in a moving back here once I'm done. So that will happen. I move back here. Okay. Mississippi, not the place I want to be. I would love to move back home, but only the time to ride. Right. It's just like Mississippi is basically a retirement place for buy land and live mm -hmm. and plus i have my kids and i know they're gonna get bored quick so they love it here because there's so many things to do here right but How they always is... say they want to right oh they said they want to move there because they're cousins but i don't know <laughs> <laughs> how is that area of san antonio texas i mean you know what is it like um how can it's i say always it? something that Okay, there you go. There's always something to do here. It's like they have festival every time you look around. Then we got SeaWorld, Six Flags. Okay. And we got the zoo downtown. Then we got the river walk. Then they got like a lot of stuff for the kids, like Andretti's and stuff, David Buster. There's always stuff going on. Okay, okay, okay. That's cool. That's cool. So um, I know you have the, the truck club, level seven. Are you going to do a Can-Am Riker Club or you have that in the works? Are you in one? What's up with that? Well, um, my president already told me, he said open up a car club. He said brought car clubs in our truck club. So okay. we're a car and truck club now. I'm trying to convince him to bring the motorcycle in. So he's working on that down the road. Okay. All right. I, I, I hear a lot of people do that now. When they get a few guys together, they start their own clubs and chapters. So... That's nice yeah. to see, you know, especially so when you get a good group. Mm -hmm. We got a couple guys in our club, got more custom bikes too. So, oh, okay. When I brought when I brought the idea to him, he's like, "It sounds good. Let's work on this car club first, then we we'll move on to the bike club once we get established." All right, that's 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 how you do it. That's how you do it. Absolutely. So, uh, you did the music. Now, I didn't do music on my bike. You put the Marine speakers. Was that a hard job? Like, if someone's listening right now and they want to put that good music on it, what advice would you give them? That's not good because my friend, basically, he did everything. Mm -hmm. Then I don't have that much bass in it and more tribbles. It's very vocal. Okay. I can't even have my radio too loud because 
you can hear for a long way. <laughs> so I had to turn my music halfway down so it, I can enjoy it. <laughs> That's crazy. But it sounds great though. Yeah. If I turn on now, you'll hear the whole hear the whole apartment complex. Wow. Wow. Was it a hard job to do? For him, what I had at first, I had it behind me. I couldn't mm -hmm. hear. So okay. he came back and put on a frame so it faced towards me. Okay. I said, it probably took about, for him, about an hour and a half, two hours. Okay. All right. That's, that's good. Well, if somebody wants to put their music on it, is it worth it? Does the muffler drown it out or what? Mm, not really. Okay. Yeah. I really don't want to play loud because, you know, drivers, they get annoyed. They're beside you at the light. They probably got something smart to say. So I play when I'm down the highway, like when I'm just cruising. I hear you. But Keeping it at a moderate wanna, tone. If I go light to light, I know people here, they kind of get a little rude with it. I hear you. I understand that totally. It's loud enough. It's loud enough to drown out the muffler. Oh, that's good. That's good. I have one of those loud mufflers, so music is a wrap for me. I actually have to ride with the earplugs because my my muffler is so loud. It's like, but I need it out here. I just people don't pay attention unless they hear in New York City. So I make sure they hear me loud and clear coming down that highway. Loud and that clear. My that my first thought was the painted loud, a loud color, painted loud color had loud <laughs> loud pipes on it. Yeah. That's my that's from my old school riding experience where you gotta have a loud pipe on your bike, but that's old school. So if um you had to describe your Can Am experience in one word or in one sentence, how would you describe it? I absolutely love it. My first experience riding, I absolutely love it. Right. That's why I wanna upgrade in the future for the travel purpose it just getting out there it's just you in the highway and other driver but it mainly just you you could just cruise and not think about nothing and that's what i love about it i get out there and just i'm in the outdoors right no I no man. that's a perfect perfect description of it absolutely perfect description of it if you had to describe it that's your feeling. And like I said, every time I get somebody on here, they always have like a different experience from the same bike. So I, I think that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. So I appreciate it. I appreciate it. So, um, you know, I'm, we're really much at the end of the show because, you know, people's attention spans are pretty short nowadays. So I don't like to stretch it out. <laughs> but um, um there. Uh, you you could tell people what you got going on social media wise and uh, how they could contact you or your your club or or they want to watch what you're doing to your bike. You know, just tell everybody what you got going on. Uh, I have an Instagram, Facebook, and my Instagram is what is it Ghost Rider? Ghost Rider, uh, you know, at Instagram. Then I had the Green Riker. I can't think of the top of my head. I got the green rock and then I have Texas chapter, level seven Texas chapter. You can find me on that. So I have like three pages going. One for my, the president, my chapter president. I got that one there. I got my bike and I got my truck one. All right, all right. I mean, that's it. So I, I'll post all the information down below on the channel. Uh, I like to thank my friend Damon for being on the show and talking about his Riker. I'm Keith Hammer. This is Rolling On 3, the podcast for all three-wheelers. Uh, if you need to reach me, you can reach me on Instagram at the Shadow Black Riker. You can email me at rollingon3wheels at gmail.com. That's the number three. My YouTube channel is Rolling On 3 Wheels, spelled out. My Twitter is Rolling On 3. So if anybody wants to reach me, that's how you reach me. The podcast also is on YouTube and streaming on all social media platforms, which is iTunes, Spotify, Google Cast, and all that stuff. Damon, thanks for being on the show. I appreciate it, man. I'll be uh, posting all your stuff below if people want to get in touch with you, man. Uh, thank you for giving me your time for the show, man. Appreciate it. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me on here. Of course, man. Of course, anytime. Mm -hmm.